Hi guys, Ree here. Welcome back to my channel, Mummy of Four Does Disney, and a very exciting video because I have got something brand new to share with you, and it's my brand new Disneyland Paris trip planner. Now this particular version is specific to Disneyland Paris. I will explain why as I go through the video, but make sure you subscribe with bell notifications on because I will be coming out with versions that are more tailored to planning for Walt Disney World or the cruise, as well as a generic Disney trip planner further down the line. So this planner actually comes in three different versions. You can choose whichever suits you better. You can choose perfect bound, which just means a normal book format. You can choose spiral bound, which the contents are exactly the same, but it's just easier to flip back and write on that. Or you can choose the digital version, which you can open in your iPad or other tablet, which will then synchronize with your phone. I have got a video over on my main channel that I created when I launched my organized life planner, but the principles are exactly the same. And that video shows you exactly how to import your planner into your tablet and use it. So if you fancy digital planning, but you need a bit of help, then that video should show you everything you need to know. Now, obviously you don't have to purchase this or any planner in order to plan your Disney trip. You could simply take a plain piece of paper and write out everything I'm showing you in this video. But if you would like to purchase either the digital or the printed version, all of the links are down below and up in the cards too. So the three different versions of this Disneyland Paris planner are exactly the same. A lot of it will be very similar in the generic versions or the versions specific to Walt Disney World, but there are a few things in here that are specific if you are traveling to France. So you can start by filling in your family name, how many nights you're going for, and the date of your trip. Then we've got a little countdown that you can color in, saying how many days you've got to left to go until Disney. A planning checklist for things you need to do, including select the dates, book your travel, park tickets, accommodation, passports, insurance, pre-travel compliance, disability access cards, if that's something you're eligible for. I have got a whole video explaining the disability system in Paris, so you can check that video out and see if you or your family are eligible and how to go about applying. Downloading the apps, your dining reservations, outfit planning and packing. Then there are spaces for you to add your own little to-do for your preliminary planning checklist. There's a space to put emergency contact details and things at the front. And then a space to collect different channels and Instagram accounts to follow. I find it helpful when planning a trip to somewhere like Disney where there's so much to take in and sometimes you have to prioritize what you really want to do and which things perhaps you're gonna skip. To watch vlogs and people's content and things, to think actually that's an attraction I really, really wanna do and other ones that you may be not so fussed on. So here's a space to make a list of content creators, accounts to follow, YouTube channels, things like that to watch so that you can have an insight into which restaurants maybe you want to visit. So you can fill out those channels and accounts on these pages. Let me know in the comments which Disneyland Paris channels you've really enjoyed watching and have been really helpful when you've been planning trips. The next page we've got a Disney budget and next to each item you've got an estimated cost for how much you think you're gonna have to budget and then a space for the actual cost where at the end you can see how much you actually ended up spending. And then we've got two pages that we're encouraging you to fill in for your Disney savings. Now, if there's ever an incentive to save for anything in life, it's gotta be a Disney trip, right? So here you can write the date, the amount you've saved, and then keep a running total. Now, this is one of the pages that makes it quite specific to Paris, which is why this is specifically a Disneyland Paris trip planner as opposed to a Disney in Florida, because it talks about the Eurostar, the Eurotunnel, the ferry, or flying, which tend to be the four ways that if you're going from the UK, that you're gonna get to Disneyland Paris. So here you can put the dates and times, travel details, and then the quotation price you can get. Maybe you'd have a different prices if you travel at different times. And this is where you can kind of jot down all the quotes that you get to see which one is going to work best for your family, both timing-wise, date-wise, how long the journey's gonna take you, and of course, the cost implications. And then we've got a space for accommodation options too, and quotations for different options. So there's the title of the accommodation, whether it's on or off site, are the park tickets included in this price? Is the transportation included? Is there a breakfast included? Is there free parking? And then you can make these notes as you're looking about what you might want to book and then you've got all of that information there to make your decision about what you're actually going to book for your trip. Then when you do book your trip, there's a space to write in all of the information that you're really gonna need to know. So you, whether you have got the flight, the ferry, Eurotunnel or Eurostar, the travel providers, booking reference, you can put in all the email addresses and telephone numbers of the providers, 
where you're departing from, the dates and times you're departing, what times you'll be arriving, whether you've paid deposits, when the payments are due, and then how you're getting from the house to the airport or station, are you driving and parking, are you using airport transfers, and then how you're getting from the airport or the station to your Disneyland Paris accommodation. There's a full page for all your accommodation details, so you can write down everything that you're going to need to know for your stay and then a page for all of your travel home details too, whether they're flights on the Eurostar, the Eurotunnel or the ferry. Next, we get on to a fun bit, which is the bucket lists. Now, this is where watching vloggers or following Instagram or TikTok accounts can be really, really helpful in planning because the first one we've got is a Disneyland Paris attraction bucket list. So here we write down the attraction that we really, really want to do during our trip. So that might be Big Thunder, Hope Space Mountain, whatever it might be. The location, is it in Fantasyland? Is it in Discoveryland? The height requirements, this is so important. And again, a really good reason to watch vlogs and things. And I always try and include this information in my vlogs or try to put it on screen to let you know the height requirements for a ride. There's nothing more disappointing when you're traveling with children that if they get to a ride they really, really wanna go on and they're too short for it. So you can make a note of the height requirements for any ride and make sure you have measured your children before you travel with the shoes on that they're gonna be wearing in the parks so you know that they're going to be able to go on the rides they want to go on and you're not gonna queue up and end up really disappointed. You can put the average queue time, you can find these on the app and whether you're going to be using Premier Access, which is again, something specific to Disneyland Paris. Over in America, they call it Genie Plus, but it's the paid for way to skip a queue and go into a shorter waiting line. Then we've got a Disneyland Paris show bucket list where you can note down the shows you'd like to see along with the location and the times that they're showing. And then a list of characters you're hoping to meet along with the locations and times they can be found. All of which you can find on the Disneyland Paris app. Next, we've got a Disneyland Paris quick serve it restaurant bucket list. You've got the restaurant, the location, the rough prices, whether it's a low price, medium price, or more expensive restaurant, and then the type of food that they offer. Vlogs are another really good way to help you out with this. At the time of filming, I've already got three different Everything We Ate in Disneyland Paris videos from our three trips in 2022. They're all in a playlist, so you can check those out if you're looking for which types of food you might want to put on these bucket lists for the next two pages as well, which are the Disneyland Paris table service restaurants, where you can put the restaurant location, the price, and whether you've made a reservation, and the Disneyland Paris snack bucket list too. Make sure you check out those Everything We Ate in Disneyland Paris videos for inspiration for your own bucket list. Then we've got two pages to sketch down outfit ideas. If you're using the digital version of this planner, you can import pictures from your camera roll directly into these pages. Then we have two pages for actual outfit planning. The way I like to use these grids is I write the days that we're traveling down one side, I write the names of the people traveling in our party across the top, and then each day sort of have like day one, re, I'm wearing a spirit jersey and jeans, for example, to travel. Day one, Bella, what she's wearing, and then just fill that in for all of the days and you know what everyone's wearing on each day. As a family, we quite like to try and theme our outfits, you'll know this if you've seen our vlogs. So if you've got specific res reservations on certain days, you might want to theme your outfits according to those reservations. I've got a whole playlist all about Disney outfits and Disney rounding, so make sure you check that out after you've seen this video if you'd like some more information. Then we have got a packing list. There are two ways to use this page. You can either put each person along the top and then every thing you've packed for that person you can tick off or you can put the dates along the top and you can pack like day one, everybody's top, skirts, cardigans, underwear. Day two, have I done everybody's everything? Depends which way you like to pack and how you use this page, but I've used it both ways. Sometimes with the digital version, I actually duplicate the page and I will use it both by person and then by day just to double check I've done everything. But it just entirely depends how your brain kind of likes to work. Then we've got a complete Disney packing list on here, which has got the general stuff that you're going to have to take. So we've got clothing, accessories, nightwear, things that we've covered in the previous list, but also passports, traveler documents, adapter plugs, chargers, electronic devices. You'll wanna add on things that are specific to your family. For example, I sometimes suffer from migraines, so I like to carry a specific migraine medicine with me in case I am feeling a migraine coming on. So I would add that onto the list for me because that's something I would always take with us. Then we've got a pre-Disney shopping list for all the things that you're gonna need to take to Disney and you have not bought yet. So in the summer, this might be sunscreen. If you're going in the winter, this might be thermal vest. Then I've got a pre-Disney to-do list. So maybe if you have a pet, you have to book a kennel for your dog. 
Maybe you have to leave a key with whoever's gonna house it and check in on your home for you. Set up out of office on your emails so you can be immersed in the magic and not bothered by work while you're away. Then we have got this pre-departure checklist, which I like to do on the very last day. So there's things like pack last minute items. For me, for example, that's my hair straighteners. So I use those every day. I will literally straighten my hair and then put the hair straighteners in the bag as a last minute thing. If you've watched my pack with me videos, you will have heard me go through all of this and talk about it a lot. Final checks can include things like weighing the luggage, making sure they're compliant with the airline amounts, you don't get charged for excess baggage. And then the very last thing on your pre-departure checklist is to leave your magical trip. The next planning pages all look like this and day by day we've got a planning and then a reflecting page. So you can put which park or parks you're going to be visiting that day, the dates you're visiting, and then the park hours for that day. It's really worth noting that with Disneyland Paris, the times fluctuate by season and even whether it's midweek or weekend. And this can be the park opening times and also things like the times of the show, such as Disney Illuminations. So you can have a list and you can take these from your bucket list of attractions you're hoping to do that day, a list of shows you're hoping to catch and the times of those shows. Again, those can be found on the apps a list of character meets. These can be found on the app as well, but jot those down into your plan. So you've got front of mind which characters you're really hoping to see that day. Your dining plans, whether you're having breakfast. So we, on our last trips, have stayed in Disney Partner Hotels. We've had breakfast in the hotel, and then we have gone into the parks. And then where you're planning to aim for, maybe for lunch, or have you got a re reservation, where you're planning to aim for for dinner and snacks. Then I would put on the schedule any reservations you actually have and any show times, so you know what to work around, and then any notes as well. And then on this accompanying page, you've got magical memories. So you've got the trip day, what the weather was like, the parks you visited, the hours you spent in the parks, attractions we, ro we rode, food we ate, characters we met, shows we watched, highlight of the day, and then a rating out of five stars. So there are plenty of pages for you to fill out your magical memories. And then at the back, we have got Disney trip notes for you to fill in with whatever you need to fill in. This edition is specific to Disneyland Paris whether it's the digital, the perfect bound or the spiral bound, whichever suits you best. And that is for a couple of reasons. So I wanted to make it specific because the way you travel to Europe would be different to the way you travel to America. Obviously you can't get the Eurotunnel when going to America, so that is specific to Paris. And things like the Premier Access are specific to Paris compared to the Genie Plus in America. And the question is why did I do the Paris one first? Why not do a generic one first? Why not do a Walt Disney one first? Well, I think this video will answer that question for you. So click over there as soon as that is live and we'll let you know. See you guys soon. Bye.